4-3, patterns and nonlinear functions. So our objective in this section is to identify and represent patterns that describe nonlinear functions. Last section we talked about linear functions, functions that make lines. This section we're going to talk about nonlinear functions, functions that don't make a line. Just like linear functions, nonlinear functions can be represent, represented using words, tables, equations, ordered pairs, and graphs. So a nonlinear function is a function whose graph is not a line or part of a line. Okay? So here are some examples. So my linear functions look like a line, look like a line, horizontal line, vertical line is okay. Okay, so these are all, the first three are all examples of a linear function, a function whose graph is a non-vertical line or part of a non-vertical line, all right, because a vertical line would not be a function. So a non-linear function is going to be a function whose graph is not a line. So we have a nice curve here, which is actually a parabola. We have this curve here, which is a cubic function, x to the third power. And we have these dots here, which represent a almost a line, but a line that's sort of reflected uh, where the negative part would have gone this way. But now that negative part is positive because this is an absolute value function, right? Everything that was negative gets flipped to the positive. Okay. So let's take a look at this first problem and decide <clears throat> which of these functions show uh, us a linear function and which don't. So the area in square inches of a pizza is a function of its radius, r, in inches. The cost in dollars of the sauce of a pizza is a function of the weight in ounces. Graph these functions shown by the tables below. Is each function linear or nonlinear? So if we look at the first table, which is my pizza area, I'm going to graph A as a function of R. So if I were to graph this, I would make a graph. I'm not going to worry about negative numbers because pizza radius can't be negative. Okay, so that's going to be my R. 6, 8, 10. Okay. And then my area I'm obviously not going to go by ones because I don't feel like making 314 dashes. Okay, let's go by 100. So let's call that 100, 200, and 300. Okay. So with a radius of 2, my area is 12. Very small. With a radius of 4, that's 50. 6, that's a little bit over 100, 113. It looks almost straight until... Now we get to 200, and at 10, we get to 314. So you can see, as we make this graph, it definitely is starting to curve up. And if you look at the difference between these two numbers, that's about 38-ish, you know, give or take, uh, that is going to be more. That's going to be about 63. And then, of course, another is that about 87 and over 100 to get the next one okay so because the differences between my outputs here my inputs are always going up by two but my outputs are going up much faster as we go that is non linear right. whereas the sauce okay we have the weight of the sauce and the cost. Okay, so the weight, let's go two, four, six, eight, ten again. Okay, and this one now we can go with uh, one dollar, two dollar, three dollars, or four dollars. Okay. So you can see at two dollars is eighty cents. Four dollars is a dollar sixty, right in the middle there. Six dollars is two forty, and right about there. 
eight dollars is a little bit over three and ten dollars is four and if i could draw perfectly this would be perfectly straight okay um so we can see that this is linear okay. bad linear there we go and we can see that the difference between all these dollar amounts is always going to be 80 cents. So as I go up by two ounces, the price of the pizza always goes up, or the price of the sauce always goes up by 80 cents. That is a linear function. Okay. So here's our got it problem. The table below shows the fraction A of the original area of a piece of paper that remains after the paper has been cut in half n times. Start with the whole paper, cut it in half. Start with that piece, cut it in half. Cut it in half again, cut it in half again. To graph a function represented by the table, and is this function linear or nonlinear? Well, I can tell that, right, after one cut, it's one half. Two cut, there's a quarter left, then an eighth, then a sixteenth. The amount left is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? If I went down a quarter here, now I'm going down an eighth. Okay, I'm not going down a quarter anymore. Uh, if I wanted to graph this, make a little more room. If I wanted to graph this, I would have one, two, three, four cuts, and my area. Uh, let's just call that one. This is going to be one half, right? One quarter. So you can see that we start at one, then a half, then a quarter, then half of that, then half of that, and then so on. And you can see we get a nice curve that eventually gets flatter and flatter and flatter. And will it ever reach zero? And the answer is no because you can always cut half of it and the denominator will continue to get larger and larger and larger and larger but it will never actually be zero now of course that's not realistic you can't actually cut a paper infinite amount of times eventually the piece of paper will be so small that you can't actually get your scissors to cut it but for mathematical purposes we can say that it's not possible so the next question deals with representing patterns and nonlinear functions. So the table shows the number of total blocks in each figure below as a function of the number of blocks along one edge. So you see with one block, then two blocks along each edge, and three blocks along each edge. Okay. So for first one, there's one block. Now we have one, two, three, four, right? One, two, one, two. This block, this block, this block, this block, four, and then four more in the backs. So that's eight blocks. Then we have three times three times three. That's 27. And then four would be 64. So my ordered pair would be four comma 64. Okay. And five, which I'm not going to even try to draw these things, would be 125 blocks. Five times five times five. So that's five. 125 if you see the pattern there okay. so represent the relationship using words an equation and a graph so each time i add one block uh the total number of blocks becomes the cube of the number of blocks on one edge so each time i represent one block to the left i put another row back and i put another row on top so we're going to be multiplying, or we're going to be multiplying by uh, the number of blocks three times. So to write an equation for that, it turns into y is equal to x to the third power. And if I wanted to make a graph, this graph would actually get very big, very fast. Okay, so if I wanted to make a graph, I would go one, two, three, four, five. And that would be the number of blocks 
uh, on the edge, then this would be the total blocks. Okay, so for here, let's go about by 50. So this is 50, 100, uh, 150, and you can see that at one block, we have one, very little, at two blocks, now we have eight, still very little, three blocks, now we're jumping up to about halfway, four blocks, a little bit bigger than 50, five blocks, 125, so that's there, and then six blocks would be six times six times six would be 216. So if I were to do one more line here, you can see this definitely jumps up way higher to 216-ish. And we have a nice curve like that. So there's a representation of this pattern using a graph. Let's try a got a problem. The table shows the number of new branches in each figure of the pattern below. So we see we hit the first one, first pattern, we have three branches. Then every branch gets three more. Then every branch gets three more. What is a pattern you can use to complete the table? Represent the relationship using words, an equation, and a graph. Okay. So, to figure this out, I'm going to uh, finish this table right here. So I can see that on the first one, the number of branches, sorry, the, the number of the figure is one, the number of branches is three. Number of the figure two, nine, three, and I could count them all up if I wanted to, 27. So on four, it would be 81. And five would be 243. So where am I getting these numbers from? Well, I ha what I realize is that this one is three to the first. Right? I'm taking one branch and I'm multiplying it and I'm, at, and I'm making three times to it. This one is three squared, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one would be three to the third. So the pattern here is gonna be y is equal to three to the x power. So that would be three to the fourth is 81. 3 to the 5th is 243. Okay. And if I wanted to graph this, my graph, again, is going to get really big really fast. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that would be branches. Oh, sorry. This is going to be the figure number. And then this would be branches. Okay, and let's call that, you know, let's call it 50 again. 100, 150, 200, okay? And one branch is three, very little, nine, very little, 27, about halfway, 81, almost to 100, and 243, suddenly we are going up very fast. Ooh, a little hitch there in the graph, but it's okay. So with these nonlinear functions, you can represent them in a bunch of different ways. Okay. A function can be thought of as a rule that you apply to the input in order to get the output. You can describe a nonlinear function with words or with an equation, just as you did with linear functions. So here's some data. Input is 1, output is 2. 2, 4, 3, 8, 4, 16, 5, 32. What is a rule that represents this function? Okay, well, if you want to, you can think of this with a table, if that helps you. So one gives you two, two, four, three, eight, four, 16, and five, 32. And I gotta figure out a rule that works for not one of them, but all of them. So let's try the simplest one, that y, if I'm starting with x, how about that? Well, okay, works for the first one, right? If I plug in X, I add one to it, I get two. But if I plug in two, add one to it, I get three, not four. So, psh, no good. So I gotta come up with a different rule. Okay? And this is just 
uh, you get a little bit, but first of all, I noticed that this is nonlinear. So this one was never going to work. Okay. So I could try something like this, but again, that is a linear function as well. Right? We'll see that a little bit more next chapter. But if I plug one in, that works. That's two. If I plug two in, that works. That four. But if I plug three in, that's six. So it doesn't give me eight. So this one is no good as well. So the trick is to come up with a nonlinear function that makes all these different points work. And there's no trick to this. It's just realizing that each successive y value is the previous one multiplied by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So the way you continue to multiply 2 by itself is to give it an exponent. This equation, let's check. Does it work? 2 to the first is 1. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 2 to the fourth is 16. And 2 to the fifth is 32. So let's look at our got it problem. And when we look at this one, we're going to have a very similar situation. Okay. Actually, never mind. This one is a little easier. So if I look at my table, I have 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16, and 5, 25. Okay. Well, you can put it in that y is equal to x to make the first one work. And that's not true for all of them. We can put in, we could try to guess other things, but I would notice that if I take 1 times 1, that's 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. All of these and the y on the output value are perfect squares. So I can simply make my equation as y is equal to x squared. So let's look at our lesson check right here and graph the function represented by the table. Is it linear or nonlinear? So x is going up by 1, y is going up by 1. This is a linear function and pretty simple to graph as well. The ordered pairs 0, negative 2, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 7, and 4, 10 represent a function. What is the rule that represents this function? This one I want to go through. So in order to solve this, let's make a table. X, Y. Okay. This is just to help you see it a little bit better. Okay. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 7, 4, 10. Okay. If you notice, these are all have the same difference. Right? To get from 1 to the next, all of them go up by 3. So this is going to be a linear function. Okay? So that means y is going to be some number times x and then maybe plus or minus something. Well, because this difference is 3, we can say that y is equal to 3x. But if I plug 0 into there, 3 times 0 gives me 0, not negative 2. So maybe I should subtract 2. And let's see if that works. Plug in 1. We get 3 minus 2 is 1. Plug in 2. That's 6 minus 2 is 4. And yes, it does work. Which rule could represent the function shown by the table below? So again, if I wanted to try to solve this, i got to figure out which one of these, and they give you choices here, A, B, C, which one of these functions actually works. Okay. So 0 squared is 0. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. That's out. Negative 1, 0 to the third is 0. Make it negative. It doesn't matter. 1 to the third is 1. Make it negative. 2 to the third is 8. So that one doesn't work. So my answer is C. For 4, does the graph represent a linear function or a nonlinear function? That's a linear function. It's a line. That is not a linear function. It's not a line. And finally, classmate says the function shown by the table of the right can be represented by the rule y is equal to x plus 1. Works for the first one. Works for the second one. It does not work for this one.
Okay. So if you notice here, the difference here is one. The difference here is not one. And there's going to be a different difference each time. So this is not a linear function. So it's just a matter of trial and error. And the thing I notice is that each one of these is one bigger than a perfect square. So my rule would be x squared plus 1. Okay. Kind of hard to pick out, but with a little practice, you'll get used to it. Okay. And that's 4-3, patterns and nonlinear functions.